Hi, this is The Daily Overpass. My name is Eric and I make apps. Now today I want to talk about when you should start your business. Okay, so as you can see, we're going to raise the level of professionalism around here. I'm going to start dressing for success. No more Mr. Shabby Guy. This is now, this is the new me. So actually what happened was I went to a meeting this morning with a client or a potential client. We you know, discuss their app needs and we're going to give them a quote on something. And uh, I always wear a suit to the first meeting just to show that I, you know, show that I care, show that I'm, I'm trying hard enough. And I went home to change before coming back into the office and I thought, no, wait, I'll wear this for the video. So, so that's the reason for the suit. Anyway, so today what I wanted to do is answer a question by, uh, by Jacob Judah. Jacob, thank you so much for all the questions over the past few weeks. Um, so this was left on episode uh, 51 uh, on Monday, I think. Uh, and he said, uh, uh, your second part of it was, Eric, at what point does one say, that's it, I'm setting up shop, right? So like, when do you start your, your business, if that's what you want to do, or your you know, agency or consultancy or, or what have you? And it's a really good question. I think the most important thing is to not do anything until you're 100% ready. And, uh, you know, and also, you know, just make sure that you're sure that everything's going to work. Uh, and then also ask all the people around you whether or not they think it's a good idea. And then, and then just take on a job while you're waiting for that, that certainty. Take on a job for 10 to 15 years, right? And then, uh, you know, and then at one point in that 10 to 15 years, you'll start to feel this tingling sensation, right? And you'll go... I'm ready, right? And that now, and then you know the, the heavens will part, and then that, you'll feel a hand on your shoulder, and you'll look up, and there'll be this old man saying, "You have been chosen," right? So, obviously, obviously, I'm kidding, right? One of the big regrets I have is I didn't start doing this stuff sooner, right? So I thought, you know, I wasn't quite ready to get started. And even when I started Overpass back in like 2004, started as a company, mostly what I was doing is contracting. So it was like it was getting into like a single contract for like you know three to six months at a time and uh and occasionally i would like i think i've told you about this before i would leave and then i would go try to find clients and i would you know go meet with clients to try to do all that kind of stuff but then i would get frustrated thinking i'm just no good at sales i'm no good at marketing uh that's just you know that's just not my thing and then i would go back to a contract and and eventually I got to the point where I did start doing that, where I did start finding contracts, where I did start uh, producing our own products and all that kind of stuff. And like I said, I, you know, I wish I'd started a, a lot you know, earlier because what I know now, you know, the experience that I've had over the last five years, I, you know, I wish you know, it's way beyond what I had five years ago, right? And I'm sure five years from now, I'll talk about, you know, I'll think about me now and it'll be like, I'm so naive now, you know, based on that future me who's gonna be so awesome, right? So. You know, and I kind of wish that I'd started the learning process early on because you're never going to be 100% certain and you're never going to feel ready, right? It's, there's always going to be some reason not to. And you know, if you don't know what the reason not to is, just ask your friends, ask your family. They'll tell you reasons not to, not to start your own company. There's, there's loads of them. And then there's also the self-doubt in your own head. And there's also, you have to have the, I'm trying to think, the, the, a non-sexist way to say it, the cojones, the, you have to have the, the, the bravery, let's just say the bravery, to be able to, um, to be able to say, I'm starting my own company when everybody goes, yeah, yeah, right, right? And it, like, you're the only one who believes in it. Like, you're the only one who thinks, yeah, this could work. Other people are able to make it work. You know, yeah, I should be able to make it work, right? So one of the things I thought was if I had started it, too early people wouldn't take me seriously because I didn't have enough experience and all that kind of stuff and that was never really the case right it was you know there's always going to be things that you have to learn along the way and I th and I think of it as being a process the same way there's a process with learning a new computer language for those of you my fellow developers out there right you start off and you're really bad at it right you make mistakes you know you um, you, you start off with your hello world program or whatever and then you you, you you spend three days working on something where like a year later you're thinking, I can't believe I spent so much time on that. It was so simple, right? And uh, you, know, and you, you, you go through this process of learning and messing up and, and doing all this stuff. So like starting your own company and if you work with clients, it's be like, you know, you're going to end up, you're going to end up trying to charge too much and then nobody will hire you or you're not going to market properly or you're going to charge too little and then you end up spending a lot more time on a project than you thought you would and you find that you're working like less than minimum wage and you're just like in this living hell just trying to get out of it or you might hire people that let you down or are dishonest or you might have 
clients who don't pay you or you might have you might not set expectations early on so you do an, an app for somebody and then you know you don't specify that we're only going to support it for a certain amount of days after it goes live so they they end up contacting you for the rest of your life whenever anything goes wrong because you weren't clear about that there's lots of things there that you that you learn as you go and even just feeling comfortable going to a meeting and and talking to uh, prospects and say okay this is what we do you know we, this is the kind of app we could do for you and all this stuff like I said I just did it a few hours ago and it's something I'm very comfortable with now but early on I would get really nervous because I would think that they would even though I knew the code I knew the technology really really well but I would be like nervous that they would know that I I you know, wasn't like a businessman or whatever and, you know, all that kind of stuff. We, you know, we all talk, you know, that, that moment in Ghostbusters when they say, we handle this kind of stuff all the time. I mean, we all go through that at some point. We have to go in and just look confident and like, yeah, we, we handle this kind of stuff all the time. And it does. And, you know, so, like I said, if I had started off, you know, I could have started this 10 years ago and I would be further along than I am now or started, you know, 10, 15 years ago. Uh, but, uh, but I didn't because I was just... I, I was, there was fear and there was also a feeling that this was not meant for me, even though it was something that I wanted, it was something that I felt like somebody had to tell me that I was good enough to do it. And then after, you know, after a while, you have to be the one who, you know, you have to be the guy who sits in front of a camera with your logo that you designed behind you, or you got to you know, wear a baseball cap with your own logo on it. And you're like, then there's a while where you're the only person who believes in it, right? But, you know, eventually, you know, you get a client, you get more clients, all this kind of stuff. It's not like, you know, you don't get ordained to have a company. You know, nobody says you are eligible or you are worthy enough. It's, you know, if you can find somebody to pay you. And it, like when I said, you know, you to wait 15 years, uh, there's one thing, one thing I did gain, you know, all those years of waiting was just, I gained the technical experience for, you know, coding and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, I have... My last contract, there was a guy, guy Paul, who would, who, would, who would joke that I was too old to be an app developer, right? So when I left to go to do full-time overpass, when I finally left to go full-time overpass, he said, are you too old to be an app developer? Because, you know, you think of an app developer as a 20-year-old wearing a hoodie with some ridiculous app idea and, you know, that's going to make it big. Uh, but, uh, you know, but so there's, you know, if you think you're too young, you know, just use that. Like, uh, I could market myself saying, I have, you know, X number of years experience, I've worked in these environments, right? You know, we've had lots, of, we've learned from failures in the past, all that kind of stuff. But as somebody who's younger, let's say if I was 20 years old or I was just getting started, I could say, hey, I grew up in the app market, you know, I didn't grow up with those legacy systems, I think mobile first, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, and if you produce apps of your own, then you already have this portfolio, which is more than, you know, I had you know, 10, 15 years ago when you're, when you're trying to go find clients. They didn't have, you know, this portfolio that I could point to. So you could say, you know, hey, we've, you know, we've produced these apps, you know, we've had these downloads, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, just, just get started. And the nice thing about doing something like this is, you know, first of all, you don't have to do it full time. You don't have to quit your job and jump head in. You could do it like I did and just like, you know, have the website set up, have, um, you know, uh, have some Google ads out there to, to see, you know, how things go. Play around with little things because the first thing you're going to need is is traffic. You know, you don't, you know, um, I remember uh, I was working with somebody who said, no, you don't just, you don't get customers and then set up your restaurant. You set up your restaurant and then go get customers. But in this kind of business, you don't. You know, and this is what I did for the longest time. I was like, you know, I set up a company, but I had no clients, right? So in the end, what I did was, I, I switched it around and, you know, go out there and find clients. And then when I had enough clients then I would, then I quit the job and then I started focusing on them full time. But for a while it was really hard because you're doing it at night, you're doing it at weekends, you're taking these, you know, you're, you're taking long bathroom breaks because you, so you could call a client up and, you know, because they, they asked it to give you a call and stuff like that. So anyway, my advice to anybody out there who wants to get started, if that's something you want to do, you know, start now because you're never going to be ready and there's going to be loads of failures along the way. And I don't mean like crippling failures, although, you know, maybe, but there's going to be, you know, things that you learn from and, you know, you, we all have skin knees and things when we learn something new and, um, and, and waiting, I don't think waiting is going to help at all. So anyway, I hope that's, um, I hope that makes sense. Anyway, that's it for today. I will talk to you a little bit more casually dressed tomorrow.